So I've seen a lot of people wanting to print their city or even sort of understand how to print their city. So I'm going to show uh, one of my methods. Um, obviously, there, there is quite a fair bit of uh, different ways that you can do it, and there's a fair bit of information out there. So you can go from using LiDAR data, which is uh, pretty cool, uh, but it is a, a little bit more um, intense on how to do it. So you need to obviously use different tools to convert that LiDAR data and, and better set your shit going from there. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to use CAD Mapper um, and uh, SketchUp. I don't normally use SketchUp for most of my stuff, but for this situation, I think it is just easier. Um, so we'll run with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a web browser. So the first thing that obviously you would um, need is um, to grab SketchUp Pro. Um, I already have it, so um, we won't be redoing all that, but you can try it for free as you can see here, um, and then download it for free and try SketchUp Pro for free. Um, and hopefully you can get the progress done before the 14 day turn or or 30 day, depending on how long the trial is. This one's 30 days and mine's only 14, but anyway. Um, the next one is CAD Mapper. Now, I am already logged in, so we'll just go to CAD Mapper. All right, so CAD Mapper enables you to sort of grab a, a different area. And as you can see, you can use AutoCAD, um, Rhino, Illustrator, or SketchUp. I haven't um, used Illustrator yet. Um, I have tried to grab the DXF files and use Fusion 360. Really doesn't like it. Um, and it just keeps freezing up. And I'm, I'm running two decent computers. I've got you know, 32 gig of RAM, massive hard drives, a couple of graphics cards and everything. So it still seems to not like it. So um, for this one, we'll use SketchUp and I might have a look at using Illustrator and seeing what we can do down that path later. All right, so um, let's get started creating a file. So normally when you click on that, you'll need you'll, it'll either take you to a login if you've already registered or you'll need to register. Um, so with this here, if you go over um, your one kilometre, um, then you need to pay. So we are going to drop down to that one K. Just gonna drag them up a little bit. All right, so that's exactly um, the one K. I'm debating sort of what I wanna do, whether I wanna do you know what, I might actually. So bridges are, are kind of a bit annoying to do. Um, if you do get it, they are a solid piece and you've got to cut them out and edit it and it's a bit annoying, um, to be honest. So what I was thinking of doing, knowing that I'm just doing the rock for photo. this way instead. Actually, no, we'll, we'll do doors and doors. Okay. I can't quite get it to do the whole of um, where we catch our ferries and everything from. So um, we'll just do that earlier. All right. So then we simply click create file and it will give us a 3D view of it. on it, it'll take you to a bigger view. So I'm just going to zoom in. Um, there's not really too many buildings on this one, but there's quite a few parks and you can see that. So you can, you've got all the parks and roads and walkways and all that type of stuff there. So that's if we went that way. 
Um, or you can always you know, oops, always go back and edit the map and decide. Nope, I don't want that. Um, I want they could have did the whole area of you know pretty much Sydney, which is like you know nine USD. We can't do that, so we will just grab. do that. I think that's going to point to our right there. We don't have to go that far. You do not do that. Alright, we'll just go with that. We'll go create file. Get buildings in this one. Oh, there we go. So there, as you can see, we've got a lot more buildings now. Um, getting a little bit more detail and stuff like that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to download that. So I have already downloaded a couple of them. So I'm just going to delete these ones that I've already done. So there is also um, another tool that you will need, um, and I'll explain that now real quickly. So it's actually um, Enroth Terrain Volume. Um, I think I have the link already. Let's go straight to the link, shall we? All right, so this is Enroth Terrain. So what this will enable us to do in, in up is actually just give it a solid base and uh, you'll see that in a minute so I will include the link to this as well all right so let me move this down more and get to this one so we will extract this one here and open this up in SketchUp Pro So there we go. Here we have the model that we're looking at. Not too bad. And there it is. So as you can see though, with the bottom, imagine trying to print that. That's a, an interesting thing for all to work there. So the add-on. So once you've use the link and you've downloaded the add-on, it's just a matter of going to extensions, extension manager, install the extension, then obviously go to, you know, wherever you've got it, install the thing. Um, once it's installed, you have to make sure that you tick it. And even if you have installed it and you want to use it again, just jump back into extension manager and make sure you select it and it's ticked. So what that will do is that will give you the uh, terrain volume here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the whole thing and we are going to go extensions and and off and so what that as you can see now if i zoom in a little bit it's now got a base yeah so there we go so now it's a little bit easier to print as you can see so from here you can make a few more adjustments so you can get rid of let's go around to this side 
So we can get rid of water. And as you can see, the changes here. Uh, you can get rid of railways, parks, parks. Uh, you can get rid of the roads. The one that I do like getting rid of is the concourse. Um, I just don't think that's needed. And if you get rid of buildings and all that kind of stuff, it'd be really needed too. So that is essentially exporting a map. And then from there you can adjust it. So um, you can actually, um, let's see if I can show you how to do this. So let's just say we wanna, let's do this, let's change our view a bit. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll do what I did here. Let's just say that we wanna look at extruding this a little bit more. So what you could do is you could actually select the whole model. If you'll let me, there we go. Right click, go extrude. All right, so now it's mapped it out a little bit better. And when you click on certain things, you can see what you can and can't adjust. So let's just say that we like to get that one, let's just close that. So now I can now extrude these panels. I can make them wider. Um, I don't think it'll let me push them to the top. There are some high up, there we go. So I can change the height of buildings and everything like that as well. So that's one way to do it. Um, it does have um, sort of constraints about how it works. So like the, you can't just click on everything and anything and do it. You have to sort of make sure that it's gonna have those little dots and that it'll actually allow you to do it. Um, even so it does take a little bit of work, but again, you could always um, also take it out into um, measurements or something like that and adjust it up a bit. But that's the basic model. So let's uh, just get rid of zoom. So that's it there. So from here, it's just a matter of exporting it out. I wish I could have got half a building. Um, anyway, <laughs> seems pretty poor cutting by me. Um, so we'll go to export. And this is where you'll get to choose sort of what you want to use, um, what you want to export it as. So you can export it as maybe DWG, DXF, or whatever. So we're going to export it. Um, yeah, we'll export it straight as an STL. Normally I'll use an OBJ just because it's easier to edit in other programs if that's what I choose. So we'll hold F5, but in this case we're going to do it this way. Now we shall get on the desktop. S3D. All right, so let's delete the original one from here. That was a dodgy one. And we're gonna go with edit, allow to maximum size, delete. From there, we have our city. Done. As I said, you can you know do your editing if you're pretty proficient using SketchUp or Rhino or whatever it is that you choose, you can go in there or even use your mesh mixer, you can adjust it a little bit more. But um, there is one file of uh, city to do. And let's see, if we were, what, what printer have I got this on? So let's convert this to the Anycubic Chillon. run it at say a 15% infill so it's not actually go 10% I think needs to be anything special uh, we'll go with our highest detail at 15% that'll get that you're okay all right we hit okay <laughs> so this is obviously now I've, I've changed my printer to the anycubic Huron um, I'll go back because I don't know not many people have a large volume printer so we'll go with there you go here's a common one the ender 3 all right there we go we'll drop it down to the ender 3 um, ender 3 there we go so 
if we were to, to print this um, at 10%, no, uh, no support, we just lost our, it's running 884, yeah, that's all right. See how long it would take to print this thing. Said, there's, there's heaps of information out there like you could use QGIS um, you can grab some LiDAR data um, off heaps and there's plenty of pages out there um, Australia um, has um, a site that you can you can grab LiDAR data off um, and you can use QGIS and, and stuff like that to edit it as I said it is a little bit more detailed um, I may end up doing a video on that a little bit later but um, it, it does, it takes quite a bit more. I mean, there are free tools out there, but sometimes they'll put like a mark in it or have like a crosscut straight through it and you've got to work your way around that and it's just annoying. Um, so there we go. So it'll take 168 hours to print that tile um, and it's going to use quite a fair amount of filament as well. But as you can see, there's all the stats just there. Um, But um, yeah, so it's not it's not too bad. Like obviously it'll take a little bit, and generally you would only print you know a twenty by twenty tile anyway. So um, if you were to change that um, to twenty, so that's that's generally yeah you know, you would only generally do like a small tile um, because you would do your whole city, um, and by the time you did your whole city you know, in 2020 you, you've got say a 12 by 12 tile it's worked out to be a pretty decent sized um, project um, and then if you but again it's, it's completely up to you as to how how big you do it and what size you want to do it or even how big a wall you have to put it on so I say to you um, I have thought about even printing it and putting it into like a, a perspex box underneath a glass table I thought that would look pretty cool see how we go anyways that's it and uh good luck and enjoy